they're going to conduct a ser they're going to move this to a counterinsurgency phase using what the same style as operation gladio style leave behind networks that's what they're putting booted up that's why you put an intel agent in charge of the entire military this guy is straight out of the operation gladio school book this is the guy who comes out of that system the cia is going to put him there and then they're going to use him for terror attacks clandestine attacks covert attacks in russia in donetsk these bakeries these marketplaces that's the next phase this thing is going to go through. So they're going to freeze the war and say, all right, we've got this settlement, we've got this treaty, whatever they're going to call it. Poland's going to come in in the West, right? And they're going to use Poland as the meat shields, as the human meat shields there in the West, just hoping, by the way, hoping that they'll get killed. The final ingredient will be provocateur events claiming Russian missiles, Russian events. Of course, all of it, all of it. And this was Operation Gladio. Operation Gladio originally was they were, they were going to blame these attacks on communists and say, communists are attacking Italy, communists are attacking Germany, we need to go war against the Soviet Union. That was the point of Operation Gladio. Thank God it wasn't successful. They're trying Operation Gladio 2.0 right before our eyes in Ukraine. You were on the show a year ago, but you got really not frantic, but very intense the last six months, saying they're going to put in this deputy head of the EU over Poland. The Poles don't want war, but a parliamentary system, for those who don't know, is not two-party. You can have a group, for people that don't know, of yes. other parties, put in a guy that got like 20-some percent of the vote. He's now arresting the political opposition desperately. How, how do you see them pushing Poland in? Sweden's not been in a war in 200 years. They're saying war is imminent. Um, the UK is saying it. Germany build. I mean... Yeah, Sweden... Now, Sweden, of course, Sweden is one of the most anti-Russia countries in all of Europe, I would say, besides Poland. Uh, Poland, of course, in recent history has many reasons to be anti-Russia. Sweden, of course, though, is extremely anti-Russia because, remember, before Russia, before Russia controlled sort of the northern tier of Europe, who was it? It was the Swedish Empire. And it was those wars against Peter the Great, that, where the Swedish Empire, they call it the Northern War, where the Swedish Empire really fell, and then Russia became the preeminent leader in the north. Sweden is looking to regain that with, oh, by the way, the influence, the power, and the military might of NATO. And, and people ask, United why does something States hundreds of years it. ago matter? It's like Crips and Blood. Somebody's great granddaddy killed their granddaddy. Yep. It just And so the NATO and the sociologist and the anthropologist are manipulating these old fault lines. Of course, so they're going through and saying, oh, that's the Russians. You remember them from, from we're talking, by the way, this is hundreds of years ago, the Swedish Empire. Uh, when you're talking Poland, it's OK. You do at least have people within living memory who remember what the Russian communists were doing. They remember this was, you know, for 80 years after World War II. But the issue here, Alex, is they're using these moral fault lines, these historic fault lines, these, these historic animuses to gin up support for a wider war and a wider conflict. So they'll say, oh, okay, maybe we need some Swedish troops, right? Sweden, what is the point of having Sweden there? Because if you have Sweden there, then you have Denmark, then you have uh, Finland. What does this do? This provides the ability to counteract Russia in the Baltic Sea. And you predicted all of this, so... This is winning time. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to stop interrupting, but okay, you already predicted this months ago, six months ago, a year ago. Tell us what's coming next. That's what Jack Posobiec does. What's coming, what's coming next, I'll tell you, it's going to be, on, on one hand, they will claim that is the stabilization of Ukraine. They say we're gonna, they're going to say we're going to stabilize the conflict. Look, Biden knows this thing's a loser. He doesn't want this thing going on all the way to 2024 while he's got an election coming up. He's going to claim to want stabilization. But we're going to see are more of these provocations provocations, uh, provoc yeah, provocations, thank you, provocations going on in the backfield. You're going to see attacks potentially on Polish troops, Polish civilians. You're going to see attacks on Russian civilians, Russian civilian infrastructure. Remember, they, they murdered a truck driver in cold blood to take out the Kerch Strait Bridge. That's exactly who these guys are. They're willing to take out civilians. They're willing to kill people who are just truck drivers or service workers to they're willing to cut Europe's gas off. Land. They'll kill everyone. They don't care because you've got these people. And Alex, <laughs> you and I had said it so many times. Victoria Nuland, you have to understand her Trotskyite background to understand. Yes, she is a communist, but her family was kicked out of Russia, right? Oh, they lived right near Odessa. They were kicked out because her family side was the Trotskyite side that lost. This is why they are anti-Russia, because they want to control Russia. They believe it is their birthright. And who was over there in the midst of this massive crisis in Kiev, this massive crisis for Zelensky? Who lands all of a sudden with her fresh-baked cookies is Vicky Newland. Oh, my God. And then you've got 
This is all the same wars being fought over again. Hans hore for stora och hans mössa för trång Hans byxor för smala och hans rock är för lång Men det gör det samma för han är min soldat Någon 